Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike the intern, Ned Reynolds in the studio on a Friday morning. So get your recliners out, guys. You're getting some naps this weekend. The British Open is in full effect. It is indeed, and the second round is already well underway, but we'll talk about that later. It's a three-way tie at the end of the first round, and the five under par 66. It was matched by uh, players like six foot eight Christo Lemprecht. <laughs> I know you're saying who? Well, he's an amateur from South Africa, and he managed to solve Royal Liverpool with a brilliant round of golf. Joined by Tommy Fleetwood and Emiliano Grillo, who is from Argentina. All had scores of five under par 66, and they led the first round. Now, the second round is in progress. There's a six-hour difference between the United States and Great Britain, but indeed that play is going on, and it's the last of the year's major golf tournaments. Exciting stuff, and again, as I started it, I'm looking forward to some naps this weekend, my man, but that's not the only place that actually has got golf going on. We've got it right here in our own backyard. Price Cutter Charity Championship in full effect as well at Highland Springs. Highland Springs is the is the venue for it. Price Cutter Charity Championship, one of the leaders, if not the leader, in charity giving on the PGA Tour. Over nineteen million dollars since the tournament was established in nineteen ninety. Leader in the first round, a guy named Pearson Cootie, and he shot a nine under par. That's not unusual. These pros don't have the difficult time that. The amateurs and the hackers would out at Island Springs. Pearson Cootie, whose twin brother Parker Cootie, is also playing in this tournament. Pearson, the leader at nine under par, is one time standout like last year at the University of Texas, as was his twin brother. And the name may be familiar to some of you who are longtime golfers. C O O D Y, Cootie. Well, his father, Kyle Cootie, played a little bit on the Corn Ferry Tour and previous tours. Never really made it big in the PGA, but granddad did. From back in my era as a kid, Charlie Cootie was a big winner on the PGA Tour, and that's the kid's grandfather and grandson, Pearson Cootie, is the leader. Huge list of challengers. Things will likely change as not only the day, but the weekend goes on. And and, and the real point here is, though, the amount of money those guys have raised over the years for great causes. It's just unbelievable that we do that right here in Springfield Mo. All right, Team USA is the reigning world soccer champion when it comes to the World Cup. When do they play their first game? Those ladies will take the field tonight, and their first round opponent over whom they should win big is Vietnam. The USA ladies are highly regarded. They should be the number one team in the world. They have won the World Cup on a number of occasions. I believe they're three-time defending champions, and they are very, very good. Have a lot of big-name stars. They're on the cover of all the sports magazines. Should win. Start tonight against Vietnam. So, Cardinals had a homestand. How are they looking? Well, they have just begun. They left home and went on the road last night. Not such a Chicago. It's what seven hundred miles away. Or Not too like far. Here. No, no. And that's a great rivalry, Cardinals and the Cubs. And the Cardinals, folks, are on a roll, big time roll. Is it enough to overcome that early season deficit? Well, we're about to find out. They're now nine and a half games under five hundred, but they are ten games out of first place. Now they're taking a look at perhaps overhauling the Milwaukee Brewers, and they still have several several uh, series left for the Brewers, who are the division leaders in the National League Central. But if the Cardinals keep winning and they've won six in a row, hey, you never can tell what might happen. Now, you have to understand the rhythm of baseball. The They're going to lose somewhere along the line, and they may lose a couple in a row. That's the key right there, how they recover. 7-2, to two, the Cardinals won it last night. But one for five, that's what Nolan Arnato was. One for five, but he had a two-run homer in this ball game, and the Cardinals, who sent Stephen Matz to the hill. Mike Stephen Matz was 0-7, and, and he wins the game. He only pitched five innings, but it's enough to get the win. And had a core of relievers come in and shut down the Cubbies, who are not very good. But nonetheless, Cardinals get the win. You have to beat them, and 7-2 was the final. They play again this afternoon at Wrigley Field in Chicago. And the weekend goes on. Six consecutive victories now. The Cardinals don't look now. They're creeping closer. But with the trade deadline coming up at the end of next week, it's, that's when it is, August the 1st, do they make any deals? I can see that general manager up there saying, wait a minute, why should we deal now? We're winning. <laughs> don't be 
don't be fooled by fool's gold. But let's see what happens. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't know. We'll see what happens uh, if they want to make any kind of push. They're going to need some pitching. Um, obviously, Kansas City Royals are out, but they haven't been doing too bad as Blake. Not until uh, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yesterday most- afternoon, and it's a warm day up in Kansas City. Detroit Tigers beat them by a score of 3 0. Uh, the, the Royals, they're playing for next year, and they're playing for the future, bringing in young kids, and that's the way you do these things. Give these kids some experience, bring them up from northwest Arkansas down in uh, Bentonville, and hey, you, you just have to work with the team and get them better. And Detroit wins yesterday 3 nothing. Okay, Springfield Cardinals and the Arkansas Travelers, this may have been <laughs> one of the sloppiest games we've ever televised. But the Springfield Cardinals win it 9-7. to seven. A game, Mike, I don't think I've ever done a game in which there were four hit batters. Four of them. Two of them, Mike Antico of the Cardinals, got plugged in the back twice in the game. I would have gone out the mound and challenged the pitch. Of course, you can't. You're going to get thrown out of the game if that happens. But over and above that, four plunked batters, nine walks by the Arkansas Travelers, who are the best team in the Texas League, and a 9-7 win for the Springfield Cardinals. After Arkansas had led five to nothing, Springbirds playing better baseball, and it's still the same deal. Where if they went out on this part, this portion of the season, they're into the playoffs. Correct? That's correct. Well, let's see if they can pull that off. That'd be great. So, Kansas City Chiefs, a lot of them reporting to training camp. The rookies, the quarterbacks reported on Wednesday. Now we got other guys starting to show up as well. Like today, the rest of the team arrives today. You're right about the quarterbacks, free agents. Some of the rookies, in fact, all of the rookies, except for those on rehab, some of the rehabbing players, and a few of the scattered veterans have been taking part in these uh, with these three sessions, which conclude today. They conclude this morning. Then the team arrives this afternoon, and then what happens? They go to the practice field in full on Sunday, and that practice session is open to the public. Mike Holmes, I can see him revving up the engine. Nine fifteen, though, that's the thing. If post COVID, they they used to do a, not. They used to do like at least one or two noon practice start times. But since COVID, for some reason, they're like nah, nine fifteen, and so everyone is nine fifteen. Which means I'm either going to have to stay in Kansas City or St. Joe the night before. Which now that makes this whole trip a real expensive thing. Or I'm leaving at four in the morning, and Mike Holmes is not going to be doing that for no practice. Wait a minute, you get up early in the morning to do this show. Yeah, but that's work, and they're paying me to do that. The Chiefs aren't paying me to go Wait to St. Joe. Wait you're not paid to go to St. Joe? No. You go on strike. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to stay asleep uh, and find out about it. Because, and again, I've, I've been several times, and when my youngest gets old enough, I will definitely make the trip. We're going to go to a preseason game, but he's not young. He's too young right now to really get it. I think he'd enjoy the game, but not training camp. But I'll definitely make the trip then. I've been so many times, though. And once you've been, it's it's a really cool thing to go and take your family with. But sometimes you need to sleep. I can remember, if you'll indulge me for a second, the first of the training camps that I went to when I was over at KY3, it was back right after they had played, uh, was it the Super Bowl game? 71, I think it was. 71, if I remember, going up there to training camp, which was at William Jewell in Liberty, Missouri. It was great. And uh, I must admit to you, even though I'm an old man, and I was much younger back then, but still intimidated by the size of those guys, the Kansas City Chiefs folks had at one time the largest team, and now I'm talking about physical, largest physical team in pro football. And when those guys, Buck Buchanan and Willie Lanier and those people, oh my goodness, they, they are huge individuals. Now, Otis, they're all, and they're, they were mean, mean, mean guys. And that's why <laughs> Ned minded his P's and Q's. I will, my mouth uh, shut, I'll tell you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for damn sure. He just smiled and kept walking. Ned, you have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday.